Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide. This is a video series I'm putting together that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. And in this part of the Absolute Beginner Guide, we're learning how to use Transex. It's very important that you saw the last video that immediately preceded this one because this video is going to be a direct continuation of that one. So if you haven't seen the previous video, then this one's not going to make any sense. Now, we are learning how to use Transex uh, initially for just a simple trip from the Earth to the Moon, and now we're learning how to go from the Moon back to the Earth. We will, of course, learn how to go to Venus, Mars, and so on, but before we get to that point, it's very important that we at least understand a little bit about how Transex works, because uh, Transex can be quite confusing compared to some of the other MFDs like Orbit MFD, Map MFD, Lying plane MFD, it's it's a it's it's quite a bit more complicated. So before we tackle going out to the other planets, we want to get a fundamental understanding of how the MFD works in the first place. And the best way to do that is to go back and forth between the Earth and the Moon. Everything that we learn by going back and forth between the Earth and the Moon will absolutely apply 100% when we go to the when we go to Venus and Mars. So it's not wasteful. It's not a waste of our time to learn this stuff. All right, let me go ahead and switch camera views here. Now, in the last video, we set up a, uh, we started setting up our plan for going uh, from the moon back to the Earth. Uh, again, make sure you saw that video because if you didn't, then you're not going to know what's going on here. So we have Transex brought up on both sides, and we have everything all ready to go. We have our, uh, we have the amount of prograde that we need dialed in. And we know that this is the right amount because if we come over to uh, view setup on uh, stage two and we change the scale to view to target, we can see that our dashed yellow line shows that we'll be arriving back at Earth really close to the atmosphere. And again, it doesn't do any good to try to get that perfect because Transex isn't that accurate. But this no this lets us know that we are in the general vicinity within you know a few hundred kilometers, hopefully. So let's go ahead and change the scale to view back to uh, all or craft on that side and then view back over to the eject plan. And then on this side, we know that we uh, are heading out in the right direction if we lift up and go to a heading of 254 because we changed our eject orientation accordingly as we outlined in the last video. And we also set our PE distance, which is how high we want to be when we lift up off the moon. We set that to 20 kilometers. And again, that's just 20 higher than that. So 1.738 plus 20 is 1.758. So that's 1,758 kilometers above the center of the moon. That will be our orbital altitude once we lift up. That's our target orbital altitude once we lift up off the moon. So we're, we're ready to go. Uh, what we want to have open at this point is we want to have our escape plan on this side. And it would help if we bring up Orbit MFD on this side. Uh, you could also optionally have Surface on this side, but I think in a lot of cases, I think Orbit will probably help you a little bit more. And when you have Orbit up on this side, make sure that you have the projection set to the uh, ship. Make sure you have distance. You probably want the distance to be set to PEA or APA, but you could also have it set to PER and APR. Just note that you want to stop accelerating when your APR is 1.758 because that's what that number is. But if you have it set to uh, PEA APA, which is how we typically have it, then you want to stop accelerating when your APA reaches 20 kilometers. So whichever way is more easy for you to understand. Now let's get our XR2 ready to go. We're going to press F8 so we can have access to the uh, 2D panel here. And we need to open the hover doors because we're going to hover up off the landing pad. And, and in the XR2, those doors are covered, uh, whereas in the standard Delta Glider, they're not. Now, in order to open those hover doors, we have to turn on the APU. The APU stands for Auxiliary Power Unit. And the bottom line for the APU is that it allows everything that can move to move. So all the moving parts of the vessel. The, the radiator opens and closes. So that's a moving part, and that part can't move unless the APU is on because the APU provides hydraulic pressure. The nose cone, the uh, landing gear, 
the surface controls, you know, the ailerons, the elevons, the rudder, all these things that require uh, movement require the APU to be turned on. And I point that out because somebody recently asked me what the APU did. So let's turn the APU on. And we're going to start by opening the uh, hover doors. And it's not a bad idea to open the retro doors when you're on the moon because sometimes you'll, especially when you're new, you will get up to orbital velocity around the moon and you'll overshoot. You'll end up at uh, 25, 35, maybe even like 150 kilometers will be your apoapsis by accident. And if that happens, it helps to have the retro doors open so that you can immediately do a uh, retro engine fire and correct your orbital altitude. So once we have that set, uh, it's a good idea to make sure surface controls are off. Doesn't They have no function in space, but having them off is not a bad idea. And then we want to change RCS mode rotation. to rotation. Because remember, once we lift up off the moon, we're going to immediately have to rotate to the correct heading, which is going to, in this case is going to be 254.6. And you can see that we don't have that much, that we don't have decimal point accuracy on our HUD. So basically, 254 and then it'll be halfway between one number and the other number that's how we'll know that we're at the right heading so let me take a sip of water information apu running and let me go ahead and press f8 so we have access to these larger mfds as we lift up off the moon and let me uh, first of all explain when i lift up off the moon and rotate to the correct heading this uh, the heading is going to go away as soon as wheels are off the landing pad, the heading disappears, and it's replaced by relative inclination. So make sure that you memorize what heading you need, or maybe even write it down if you have a really short-term memory problem. Because um, one thing that can be irritating is to lift up off the moon, and then try to look down and say, what's my heading, and you don't, and you don't have it. It's replaced by relative inclination, and you, and you don't remember what heading you need. So then you have to settle back down on the pad, just to get the heading. So check, heading is 254.6. So now we're going to engage the uh, hover engines and watch the heading as soon as I do this. Warning, on external wheels are offline. Notice it's gone. APU running. And we want to rotate around to, uh, oh my God, I forgot, no. 254.6, which uh, we're, gonna, we're not gonna be able to get that exactly because we don't have decimal points here. So we're gonna go to about right here that's about 254 and a half now full power on the main engines shut off the hover and we're going to pitch up just enough to keep the nose above the horizon the velocity vector above the horizon because if the, if the velocity vector drops below the horizon then we'll start falling out of the sky and we don't want that but we also don't want to pitch up to 10 20 30 degrees because then we'll reach apoapsis really fast once we have done that, we can actually shut, we can actually close the hover doors. And I don't remember the hotkey for it. I think it's control V. Yeah, it's control V. Notice the velocity vector is getting really close to there. I don't really want it to go any lower. So I'm gonna pitch up just a little bit more. But really what I wanna watch at this point is that relative inclination. I wanna make sure that that's counting down and not counting up. If it's counting up, then we're getting farther and farther out of plane. We don't want that. Notice our altitude's dropping a little bit. Not too worried about it because we're about a thousand meters up, but if you're only at 20, 30, 40 uh, meters up, then you could actually hit the ground. So watch your velocity, make sure your velocity vector doesn't drop. And we'll get to orbital velocity really fast around the moon, so there's not much time for me to explain anything here. I'm going to put in just a little bit of right rotation because I need to bring the relative inclination down a little bit faster. Now I'm going to bring the nose all the way down to the horizon because I don't want to climb. I don't want the velocity vector to raise really high. Now I'm just going to watch APA. That's it. Okay, we're at 4. I just remember I, my target APA is 20. And notice how fast we get up to orbital velocity around the moon. It's just really fast. So you got to work quickly APA and pay attention. Translation. Now we're at 19.58. So with just a little burst of translation, we have about 20. It doesn't have to be perfect. So if you're you know, off by that, or if you're at 21 kilometers, or if you if you only get to 19.5, doesn't matter. Preferably get it at least 20. Um, if you if you err err a little bit on the high side, not on the low side. Now, once we are at this point, uh, we can press H to bring up the orbit HUD. And for some reason, it says that our we're orbiting Earth, but 
here in the orbit MFD, if we press the HUD button, that'll correctly put this information up on the HUD because we're in fact orbiting the moon. Now you can hear that humming sound in the background. That's the APU running and that's wasteful because it's not needed, to the, needed at the moment. We can close the retro doors, but it's probably not a bad idea to leave them open because when we do our burn here in a little while to go back to Earth, uh, it wouldn't hurt to have those doors open in case we overshoot that burn for some reason. So we're going to go ahead and leave the retro doors open and turn the APU off. And now let's F8 back over to here so we have these larger MFDs to look at. Now, one of the highest priorities whenever you're whenever you get up into orbit is you want to have a circular orbit because if you don't have a circular orbit then what will happen is you, you'll go around and you'll eventually uh, hit come back down into the atmosphere in the case of like Earth or Venus or Titan but or you'll hit the ground and crash in the case of you know the moon or all these other bodies that don't have an atmosphere you can see here our PEA is negative five that's five kilometers below the surface so if we don't circularize, then we're going to hit the ground and crash. But notice here, this is where we are at in our orbit around the moon. And this is when we're going to do our ejection. We're going to do it right here. Notice that in orbit MFD, and you want to have the frame here set to ECL because you notice it matches. The orbital line matches if you have it set to EQ, EQU, then the position doesn't match what we have here. So make sure the frame in this case is set to ECL. We're going to eject at this point, and we're going to reach apoapsis at this point. Clearly, apoapsis is after the eject point, so there's no need to go to the apoapsis and circularize, because once we get to this point, we're going to eject all the way back to Earth anyway, so circularizing is a moot point. But if for some reason your apoapsis occurred before this point, let's say our apoapsis was here, then we would want to circularize as our first order of business. But in this case, again, the, we're going to actually reach the eject point uh, first, so we don't need to worry about it. Now, there is something else that we can do before we go too far. Uh, if we press VAR on stage one to get over to the escape plan, and we want to have, I'm sorry, if we press VW, to have the escape plan and then VAR to bring up the eject orientation. When you're new and you're doing that initial ride up to orbit around the moon, you may end up in orbit with a relative inclination that's pretty lousy. Uh, and right now we don't know exactly what our relative inclination is. It says it's 0 0.05, but notice the white line, the line of nodes is actually not lying over top of the green line. So, bef so to get an accurate numbers to know what our relative inclination actually is right now, we need to swing that white line around. And that's actually taking it the wrong direction. Notice the relative inclination is going up. So I need to swing it the other direction. And now it's over top of our current position. And this tells me that my relative inclination right now is 0 0.06. That's not bad, but we can improve on that. Uh, let's go to the prograde position, and this would be especially important if your relative inclination is worse than mine. Let's say yours is uh, 0.05 or something, which would be a half degree out. Then you can do a, a bit of a correction here, and there are a couple of ways we can do that. But I, first of all, I like to be in the prograde position. Now we're going to turn the prograde autopilot off because we'll be fighting the autopilot if we don't. So turn the autopilot off, rotation. switch over to rotation, and it wouldn't hit, hurt to kill rotate here. Now, you'll notice that we're moving quickly around the moon, so we need to kind of make an adjustment here every few seconds to keep that white line over our current position. And the reason that we want it over our current position is because otherwise we don't have an accurate, uh, we don't have an accurate uh, relative inclination. If the, if the white line's way over here, then it says our relative inclination is 0 0.05, but that's... That's if we were at that point, or if we were at that point, and we're not at that point. We are here. So we need that white line to be over our current position. Now, to bring our relative inclination down, we can simply use a bit of translation thrusters up or down. Since we're in the prograde position, that's why we got into the prograde position, we can use translation thrusters up and down to adjust our relative inclination. 
And there is a way to know which way to do it, but for a lot of people, the easiest thing to do is just going to be to tap the root, tap the uh, translation thrusters one way or the other, and then see what works. So for example, I'm going to press 2, and I'm actually on rotation, which I don't want. <laughs> So again, translation. translation. Now I'll tap two. And notice as I tap two, that my relative inclination is going up. So that's not what I want. I want my relative inclination to be lower. So I need to be pressing the eight button. And again, there is a way to know which way to tap the translation. If you look very closely at the line of nodes, you'll see that there's a circle here that is uh, not filled in on that side. And it is filled in on that side. If the circle is filled in, you want orbit plus. I said that backwards. If it's, if it's not filled in, you want orbit plus. If it is filled in, you want orbit minus. It's one of those, it's not as easy of a memory trick as the ascending node, descending node, where a n equals a n. So I always have to really think about it and I often get it backwards. So the easiest thing to do again, just adjust the white line till it's over top your current position and then just press two or eight and see which one improves your alignment. In this case, eight is helping. So I'm just gonna press that and hold it and bring that down. And there's something I'll point out here. We don't necessarily want to bring this down uh, to zero because you'll note that this number changes because you know there are per perturbations that happen as we move from one point in, of our orbit to another. So currently that number is going up. So that tells me that from the time that I go from here to here, it's going to increase. But what if I do this? What if I swing the, the line all the way around in the other direction and now notice it's counting down? So that tells me as I get closer to this eject point, it's going to continue to count down. And notice that this number is counting down about one per second. I'm currently 1,282 seconds away from the time to do the burn. So if I can make this timing match that timing, then by the time I get here, my relative inclination should be exactly 0 0.0000 000 all the way across. So what I'm going to try to do here is make that number count down at the same rate as that number. And I would say right about here is pretty close. It doesn't have to be perfect, but notice this number is counting down about one. Well, it is counting down one second at a time. And now that number is counting down about one second at a time. So by the time I get over here, my relative inclination when I do the burn back to Earth should be absolutely perfect. Now, there are two, uh, there are actually several different ways that we can do the ejection burn to go back to Earth. And I'm always tempted to show all the different ways to do it, but I think, I think in this case, I just want to show the best way or the, what, I, what I consider to be the right way. When we set up the, the maneuver, or rather I should say, when we set up the eject plan to go back to Earth while we're sitting on the moon, it turns out that the eject date that it uses is based on the uh, time that we set that up. And that time expires instantaneously. As soon as you turn the eject plan on, it picks the date that that was while you were there on the landing pad. And that was, you know, dot six, nine, seven, seven. And it's now dot seven, two, six, two. So that means that this timing is obsolete. It's based on what we were planning while we were sitting there on the landing pad. You can use that. Uh, you can you can go around to this point and eject back to Earth, and it won't be it won't be a problem. You'll definitely still get back to the Earth. But we can improve our accuracy if we set up a maneuver to replace the eject plan, and I'll show how to do that. And this is what I recommend. Uh, I kind of struggled with this a couple years ago when I was introducing TransX and setting up different videos. I initially always showed the other way first <clears throat> and then showed how to set up the maneuver as, as an addendum to that video because it was a little harder to do it. But after, after a couple more years of thinking about it, I just, I, I just, I think this is just the right way to do it. 
doing it the the other way is just it's just bad practice and especially when you go to the other planets the timing is much more critical so it's just this is the right way to do it so we're going to bring up transx on this side and we're going to uh, have it also on stage one which might be a little confusing to you but you'll understand in a second so over here we have stage one view escape plan but on this side we're going to have stage one view maneuver so they're in different views so even though we're in the same stage we're looking at different views of that stage now in order to set up a maneuver um, this is no different than when we were at earth we have to turn maneuver mode on when we have view maneuver up and the maneuver modes off pressing var does nothing minus vr does nothing the adjustments do nothing the only thing that we can do is turn maneuver mode on so i'm going to do that now now i'm going to press var until we get over to the prograde variable now this is very simple we don't have to guess how much prograde we need we already have figured that out and it's given to us right here delta v 837.1 that's exactly how much delta v we need and we can either put it in this way but it actually makes more sense to just press the enter button and type it so eight seven uh, eight three seven point two enter that's how much prograde we need now you can see that when we did that we have this sort of weird look here where we've got this hypothetical line going like that and we've got this hypothetical line over here going like that well we know that this is our eject point and we need this hypothetical line to match up with this one and the way we do that is very simply by changing the time that we're going to do this maneuver and remember when we come over to maneuver date we don't always have to think of the date in terms of day week month year but it can also be thought of as maneuver time and in this case we want to think of it as maneuver time we're going to do this maneuver not in a day or two days but we're going to do this maneuver in just 981 seconds so we want to uh, change the adjustment here down to a very fine setting probably probably ultra for starters and we're going to swing this forward notice when i press plus plus it goes forward and we're just going to swing it forward till it lays straight over top of that and it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but you do want to get it close once you get to that point where you can't really get it any better with the ultra go down to a finer setting go to hyper and try to line it up that way and if you can't quite get it with hyper maybe even go down to micro and you'll definitely be able to get it lined up with micro but again it doesn't have to be perfect and you'll understand why we don't have to go for perfection here in a moment once we have that set up we we now need to actually erase our our eject plan so we want to go forward on either side it doesn't matter which side but we'll go forward on this side and we want to view over until we see the eject plan and we want to go through our variables and just erase all of them outward is already at zero so we don't have to worry about that plane change is already at zero so we don't have to worry about that but prograde is still set what's happening in transx currently is that transx is prioritizing this eject plan over our maneuver and we don't want that we want transx to look at the maneuver so if we come to this prograde variable and we just go to the adjustments and we go to reset and hit plus plus and now transx has erased uh, effectively erased our eject plan and it now has given priority to that maneuver that we just set up this is the right way to do it it may seem a little complicated and you may have to think about this and you may have to go through this video several times to do it but trust me this is the right way to do it uh, the alternate way that i'm very tempted to show is a little bit easier but there's a lot of reasons why it's just a bad habit to do it the, uh, the alternate way once you have the eject plan effectively erased you'll notice that our view in stage one is kind of tilted and that's okay because it's just the way the graphics look but remember we talked about we could change the way the graphics look so that, that it's to our liking and we do that by changing the view over to setup and we do that with graph projection and 
before when we had uh, when we were using the eject plan, we wanted the graph projection to be set to plan because it made our graphics look how we want. But in this case, we now want to change the graph projection so that it's focus. That's edge on. That's ecliptic. And now it's set on focus. I think maneuver also would work. That's fine. You could use focus or maneuver. In fact, maneuver might be better. And this doesn't change the way the flight works. This just changes the way the graphics look. So again, when we have it set on plan, which is how we needed it before, because we were using the eject plan, now we're not using the eject plan anymore. So we're going to change the way the graphics look, but we're going to tell it to base it on the maneuver instead of basing it on the eject plan. Now let's go forward on this side and let's view. Uh, actually, let's go back on this side and let's view the maneuver. And what we have here on stage two is it, we, we don't actually get the encounter view, although I think we can bring it up if we let me just check something really quick here. We turn auto plan off and we turn advanced on. I believe we can get the encounter view on this side. Just bear with me one moment. And that will give us encounter. Yeah, we could do it that way. So if you want to have the encounter view on this side, which could be helpful for a few different reasons, but we don't have to have it. But what you'll have to do is you'll have to turn auto plan off and you'll have to turn advanced on. Then you'll have to go to the plan type and set it to through point. Then you'll have to set the plan as encounter. Once you do that, then you can then press VW on this side to have view encounter, which we kind of had when we went from the Earth to the moon. We had the maneuver on the left and we had the encounter view on the right. That's completely optional. You don't have to do it. But by having the uh, view encounter up over here, we have access to a little bit more information. And now on the left side, we can we can kind of tweak our maneuver a little bit if we like. Remember we said that when we set up a maneuver, we have maneuvers are only valid for maybe 300 seconds at a time. And we set up our maneuver when we were still like 900 seconds before we were going to do the burn. So what we will want to do when we get within just 300 seconds of doing the burn, we're going to want to go and do an update on the maneuver and then see if there's any additional tweaking that we want to do once we get right up to that time to do the burn. Because when you set up maneuvers a thousand seconds in advance or 1500 seconds in advance, and then you warp time forward until it's time to begin the burn, everything that you set up 1500 seconds ago can hit, will have changed slightly by the time you get up to the point where you actually want to do the burn. So it can be beneficial. Uh, I recommend when you're new that you start setting up your maneuvers when you're a thousand or fifteen hundred seconds out because you'll need the time but then when you get to you know 300 seconds before the burn you're going to want to do some kind of an update now we're coming up to 30 minutes on this point in the video so we're going to go ahead and end it here and then when we come back we'll talk about how to how to finalize this maneuver how to make sure that everything is absolutely correct and then we'll do the burn and head off to earth if you like this part of the video, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hit the don't like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Please leave your comments down below. That's always important. Check for various links in the description, and I will see you in the next part.